Okay, so how do you know if the shoulder pain is bursitis related or say supraspinatus tendonitis or something else, for example? Now, because what happens is this. Well, first of all, it's very difficult to tell unless you get an MRI or an ultrasound, okay? But look, the thing is, whether it's bursitis or whether it's, say, supraspinatus tendonitis, what we're getting is an impingement. Now, I did the video on the painful arc, right? So if the person goes up and they're going up and they go, oh, yeah, yeah, I can feel that. Okay, painful arc will be painful generally in this. And that is because the, when the humeral head comes up, it um, impinges under the acromion. So your acromion is this bony head right at the top here. And the structures here might be inflamed. And so what happens is you go underneath and it hits that and it keeps banging there and inflaming those structures. That might be the subacromial bursa, which sits right in between that and the tendon. So the humeral head, your upper arm bone, goes under. So, and it keeps mashing it, okay? And that's why you get bursitis, inflammation of the bursa, bursa and tenderitis. So what happens is you wanna check for impingement. Now, uh, there are a couple of things you can do to check for impingement. Now remember, all this is telling you is certain things are getting impinged, so uh, you know, pinched if you like, impinged underneath underneath here, okay? They will both, whether it's tendonitis. Now remember, it can be bursitis and tendonitis, and there could be tears, okay? The supraspinatus that comes through here is one of the rotator cuff muscles, and it's the most commonly affected uh, rotator cuff muscle by far. It's like implicated in shoulder pain, with, uh, when it, certainly when it comes to rotator cuff problems, it's 95% the offender. And so that action of the supraspinatus is when you do this, and you'll see it's called painful arc syndrome. Why is it that? Well, when someone takes their, their arm up like this, when it impinges is when the pain comes. So if you can imagine, so if I start here like this, and there comes the other arm, uh, impinge, 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 and then it's free, okay? So it comes up for a little bit, and what, what you'll see is the person, so you always wanna be doing it, uh, because if you slouch, when you, you can only take it that far, look, this is one of the major problems with people with shoulder pain, posture, okay? So you need to get your shoulders back and down. I've got strengthening exercises for the shoulder, for the muscles between the shoulder blades, but that's for another, another video. So what you wanna do, if this is you, is first and foremost is sit tall, stand tall, walk tall. Stop slouching, okay? Slouching is damaging your shoulders. Just the simple fact that you're sitting in better, sitting and standing in better posture, then, because you do this at home. So if you do this, oh, all right? You can't get anywhere when you, when you slouch forward. Come up, no problem at all. Now, what happens? People are doing lots of overhead activities or unaccustomed activity can start, just keep grinding away, grinding away, grinding away, impinge, 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 until it just, it, you know, it gets inflamed. It gets really upset. So when you see the person, they'll generally come in. This is a positive test for impingement. So shoulder subacromial impingement syndrome, all right? So you get them to do this, and what you'll find, so remember, so what I'm doing here, that's that. Now, here we go, impinge, 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 as these structures are getting jammed underneath this acromion. So what that'll look like is the person go, oh yeah, I feel it, yep, yep, that's it there, that's it, that's it, keep, can you get them, get them to see if they can keep going? Because what'll happen, it'll impinge, and then it will free, right? So that what'll happen is the pain will go, Oh, yep, 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 that's it. Generally about 60 to 120 degrees. They go, yeah. I oh, know. No, it's no, no pain up here. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. And so on and so forth. And that's doing that, okay? So that's a positive painful arc test, okay? Positive sign for shoulder impingement. Could it be bursitis? Yes. Could it be tendonitis? Yes. Could it be tendinopathy? Yes. Uh, could it be other things? Yes, it doesn't tell you. It just tells you you got subacromial bursitis. Now, but when it comes to treating them, they'll be the same. When it comes to the exercises, they'll be the same, okay? Now, another impingement test, if you wanted to do it, um, is what you do, the Hawking's-Kennedy test. So you get the person, and what you're doing is internally rotating the shoulder, and if so this will be another test. Now, I'm gonna show you three different tests, right? One of them might be positive, which is like, okay. Two of them positive, obviously much stronger that it's, that it's a real impingement. And if it's all three, well, you're gonna start thinking, yes, we got shoulder impingement syndrome. Still don't know what it is, whether it's but that's impingement. And it's the most common shoulder pain by 
a country mile, okay? The vast majority will be shoulder impingement problems, okay? So, you get them, so if you were do, to do this, you can do this on yourself, all right? If you were doing it someone, you'd hold their elbow like that and get your hand ab above the wrist, you don't wanna go over two joints, above the wrist like that, support here, and you could do this, making this movement, okay? And you can do it there, and you can bring it across further. If they went, oh yeah, that's pain. Okay, we've got a positive. Now, but if they went, no, that's fine. Oh yeah, 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 that's it there. As we bring it across, you can get positives as you go. So that'd be too positive if you've got pain in both of those. The third one is what's called uh, testing the, the strength of your inf infraspinatus. That's a muscle on the back of your shoulder blade, and what that, the, the this very commonly gets torn and you don't even know about it, it's painless. In fact, I've got a, a video which I'll put on about MRIs and how uh, so many people have rotator cuff tears and don't even know and have full full strength. But this, this if this is weak, and I'll show you how to test this, well, because what, the infraspinatus is a muscle, one of the rotator cuff muscles, and its job, apart from doing external rotation, that's its job there, okay, but it also pulls this upper arm bone down on abduction. Why is that important? Well, if that's, if that's torn, which will be weak, generally be weak, right? If that's torn, what happens is it's too weak to, so what, when I want to do this motion, one of the first motions is that uh, infraspinatus here, bringing that down, clearing it out of the way for that. But if that is weak, maybe from tears, then what it's doing, it's not doing that, is it? It's not bringing it down. It's too weak to do it. So when I abduct, my, my arm's just going to crunch like that. So testing for weakness, what you do, you want the person to put their elbows, or if this is you again, you test your good side. So I'll do it just if you're testing yourself, right? That's the most likelihood. So you can test your good, good shoulder. If you've got a good shoulder, test that. So what you're doing, you're gonna keep this elbow locked and bring it out like that. That's external rotation. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna resist the external rotation and, and see if it's weaker. So weak or pain or both. And so you test that. So what I'm trying to do is this, but I'm holding at the wrist, above the wrist here on the forearm. Okay, test the strength there, no pain. Keeping that elbow locked onto the rib cage. You can't let it fly out because then you start bringing in other muscles. Okay, so do that, okay. And if I went, so I'm trying to push out and I went, oh, it's weak, right? So if you can easily, now if you were doing it on a person, you test them both at the same time and get them to do this motion as you are trying to push them in and find one, one might just go, ugh, the other one's strong. And that very indicative of infraspinatus tearing, uh, it could be tears there, but it's weak and you would need to strengthen that infraspinatus. But those are three, what they found are the most accurate, three for impingement tests, okay? The, the three most, painful arc, okay? Hawking's Kennedy, and this external rotation test for your infraspinatus. All right, so just remember, they will tell you that it's impinged. We don't know what structures are impinging it, but at the end of the day, I'll treat the person exactly the same, because well, there'll be tenderness, tenderness here, could be tenderness here, but it doesn't tell you what's impinging, but remember, the treatment's the same, and the home exercises I would give are exactly the same for either. It's, it's treating shoulder impingement, regardless of those structures.